Hello, my name is Edmund Haveron and this time I would like to show you how to fake bubbles with the Blender Fluid Simulator. Because the current implementation of the LBM solver is not able to simulate fluids of different densities, we have to do a little trick. In the past there were different approaches to fake bubbles, either with moving fluid obstacles or animated outflow objects. Unfortunately, none of these methods mentioned here leads to satisfying results. Before we get started, I would like to involve you into the thinking process behind the solution I have found. At first we have to look at bubbles and remember what bubbles are actually. Well, what we perceive as a bubble is nothing more than a fluid of a certain density rising or moving through another fluid with a different density from it. And when these two fluids have different indices of refraction, we are able to see where the molecules of those fluids have contact with each other. The contact surface between these two fluids is called also the boundary surface. And to get a better understanding, let us do a short scribble to visualize some bubbles. For the sake of simplicity, let's have a look at a rectangle and let's call it domain. We add a water surface and also some bubbles and due to their lower density they rise up until they break through the water surface. And also Let's name these fluids. Let's call this air. And this one will be the water. But what happens if we turn this whole thing around? Let's rotate the domain 180 degrees. Let's swap the roles of these two. Now, this is the air and this is the water. I bet instantly some of you will say, hey, these guys are drops falling into water. And I say, you're 100% right. Because what is a water drop? It's nothing more than a bubble moving through a different fluid. In this case, water is moving through a mixture of some gases that we call air. Finally, we can say how we perceive water or air as a bubble or as a drop depends on our point of view. And with this point of view, let's set up our fluid simulation for a water drop and let's see what we can do with it. Move the default cube to layer 2 and add a icosphere. Hit spacebar and assign a fluid simulation to it. There is a very handy operator called Quick Fluid. And this sets up a completely ready to run fluid simulation. Duplicate the domain and scale it along the z-axis about 0.3 and move it to the bottom of our domain and change its fluid type from domain to fluid. So this will be the water surface that a drop will fall in. Also scale down the, the icosphere a bit and duplicate it about two times So we get uh, three drops of water. Oh.
Okay, and we're good to go. Adjust the final settings here. Change the preview down to one. And back at the simulation. Change viewport display to final. Hit Alt A and select these objects here and move them to a different layer since we don't need them anymore. Change the end time to 75 frames because 250 is too much. And to make it look a bit nicer, change to cycles and add some materials to the fluid and to the background. What we have here are water drops falling down to water surface. But we want bubbles rising up, right? And to achieve this, let's do the same thing like we did on the drawing. Let's rotate the whole thing 180 degrees around. Make sure that the cursor is in the center of our scene by hitting Shift-C and make it the center of our rotation. Select the domain and rotate it. 180 degrees and play back the animation. We get rising bubbles, but there are still some problems here. We can see only the boundary surface and the outer fluid surface around is missing. When we render this we get the same water simulation turned upside down. If we could cover the bubble with the surrounding face, this would solve our problem. To do this, turn on layer 2 and adjust the size of the default cube so its faces cover our bubbles entirely. And add the same material to it. Looks more convincing now. But there are some really ugly intersections with the moving water surface and it's not looking very realistic since the water movement depends on the movement of the air and we don't have this here at all. Now let's get rid of that cube. We need to find a way to somehow invert the whole thing. To turn this space where there is nothing into water and this space where there is water into air. At this point we get a big helper called the boolean modifier and the really good news about this is that we can apply it to a fluid domain. And to do this select the fluid domain and duplicate it, move to the physics tab and delete its fluid properties. So we get this bare cuboid object go to the modifier tab and add a boolean modifier to it. And now we're going to subtract the domain, our fluid domain, from this object here, from this cubite object. And to do this, select difference from this operation drop-down menu and in the object field select fluid domain. And immediately our fluid domain is being subtracted from it. And if we hit the arrow key we can see that uh, we can scrub through our animation and the boolean modifier updates immediately. And this is pretty cool. There's only one problem here. Um, the skewboard object is too big, so we need to resize it a bit so it doesn't cover our fluid domain entirely.
Tap out. Hide the food domain. And uh, this is uh, the sub subtracted flute domain. This is pretty cool. And these ugly triangles here, uh, we can get rid of them by adding a edge split modifier to it. Let's switch to render preview. Go to the side view and let's have a look at our simulation. Now we have bubbles rising up and breaking through the fluid surface and it looks like it it would interact with the air but it doesn't because it is faked. Um, but I think it's a nice way to create some really cool bubbles with a blender fluid simulator. I've already created a short video of a glass with sparkling water uh, that I would like to show to you. And uh, I used the same technique for this video, but on much, much more inflow objects within the fluid simulator. And I would like to give you a short breakdown on how I created this. So let's go back to Blender and let's have a look at it. I started with a simple glass model. I created it by adding vertices, connecting them to edges and spinning them around the center axis. Then I selected the inner part of this object. Um, these vertices here, or these faces here, uh, the faces that would be in contact with the fluid and detached them from this object. So I got a new object here, uh, this blue one. This, then I selected the top edges here and extruded them a few times to the center and merged the vertices down here. I also moved them slightly to the top to make sure that this object would clearly overlap with the fluid domain um, to make sure that uh, uh, or to, to, to catch all the details of the fluid movement here. Okay, the next step was uh, setting up the fluid simulation. There were a lot of inflow objects and Adjusting all these values and properties by hand in the physics tab would have been a tedious task, so I decided to use a Python script for this task. I wanted these spheres to be placed randomly uh, within a circle, and I used a parametric equation for a circle for this, and uh, changed the values randomly. Also, each one of these inflow objects objects has got a, a track to constraint to it uh, <coughs> excuse me uh, this is because uh, i wanted um, these uh, objects to emit the fluid in a slight curve movement now yeah. let me show you real quick how this looks like if i hit alt a you can see that all these guys here are being emitted in a slight curve movement yeah um, the bubbles in the center are moving straight up, but those close to the glass surface go in with a slightly curved movement, yeah, and uh, this is, I think, more realistic. Okay, um, <clears throat> next step was uh, adjusting all these values in the uh, for the fluid simulation, adding a modifier and uh, in uh, fluid type uh, or fluid sim type was inflow, use local coordinates for this movement, you know, for this curve movement, together with this uh, track to constraint, and uh, also adding random value for the velocity. And finally, uh, adding keyframes to each, each uh, inflow object. Okay. Um, then I also had to add a outflow object. This is because uh, we are emitting constantly uh, fluid to this domain and uh, if there is a constant inflow 
the fluid level is gonna rise and I want it to stay on a certain level. And to accomplish this, you need uh, a outflow ob object. The problem here was to find out the right size for it, so I had to rerun the simulation a, a few times at low resolutions to find the right size, so it was a bit of trial and error. Okay, um, oh yeah, uh, and um, rotating this whole thing around 180 degrees like we did before is not necessary, because uh, going to the scene tab and setting the gravity value does the same. Just uh, add here a positive value here and all this stuff will go up. Yeah. Okay, then last step was uh, putting it all together and uh, subtracting the fluid domain from the inner glass object here to catch all this movement. And one more time I would like to show you why it's important to uh, overlap these two. We have uh, the inner glass object and uh, when it is not overlapping clearly you can't catch the movement of this uh, part of the fluid simulation. So you have to move it slightly up to catch all those details, yeah, because it's, it's, it is moving, the bubbles are breaking through the fluid surface, uh, there is a lot of up and down movement. And to catch this, you need this overlapping. Okay, um, then last step was uh, adjusting the environment. So I added a slice, a lemon slice, a table, a wall, light source, another light source and of course this tree here and um, this tree is animated at alt a you can see it's moving uh, just to cast shadows onto the table and uh, to make a bit more interesting scene okay um, this is it for this tutorial i hope um, you can use this for your own projects i hope i could show you something new and um, thank you for watching, thank you for your time and enjoy!